want to welcome everybody out tonight to the uh, All Good City Council meeting scheduled for April the 11th, 2017. Uh, we'll have the meeting call to order and the roll call. Honorable Mayor Bilbrey. Present. Honorable Vice Mayor Dyer. Present. Honorable Councilwoman Norris. Present. Honorable Councilman Hurd. Present. Our invocation will be led by Mr. Bill Matheny, if you would, sir, approach. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we humbly bow just as humbly we know how. We come thanking you, Lord, for the many blessings of another day of life, for all your love towards us for hearing and answering our prayers. We thank you for Jesus, most of all, and the salvation plan that he brought. We ask you, Lord, to look down tonight to touch all those that are sick in the hospitals and rest homes, wherever they might be, Lord. Heal their bodies if it's your will. We ask you to comfort them, Lord, that's lost their loved ones. Lord, fill that emptiness and void in their heart and life as only you can. Lord, we ask you to heal our nation, dear Heavenly Father, that we might come together, Lord, in, in love and unity. We pray, Lord, for this meeting here tonight that it'll be carried out, Lord, according to your will. Lord, just have your will and way in each of our hearts and lives. Forgive us when we fail you. We give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Roger Williams. If you would, sir. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> first item on the agenda tonight is to consider the agenda and the minutes. I think everybody's had a chance to review those. Uh, is there any discussion on those? Motion. Second. Motion second on the floor. Roll call vote. Mayor Bilbrey. Yes. Vice Mayor Dyer. Yes. Honorable Norris. Yes. Honorable Hurd. Yes. Next item, consider approval of minutes of council meeting held March the 14th, 2017. Uh, I think everybody's had a chance to review those as well as in our packet. To motion. Have, have a motion. Second. Motion second on the floor. Roll call vote, please. Mayor Bilbrey. Yes. Vice Mayor Dyer. Yes. Honorable Norris. Yes. Honorable Hurd. Yes. Next item is consider approval of uh, WNO or FTM contracting uh, for community center bathroom remodeling in the amount of. Keith, would you like to speak to that? We received two bids on these. These were to demo the interior of the two bathrooms, to put tile in the floor and five foot up the wall, uh, remove all of the fixtures and put in ADA compliant fixtures, uh, grab handles and toilets. And um, the only two difference in the bids that I have found is that um, FTM was including the entrance doors and they were installing two new doors with steel frames and solid core doors with ADA hardware. While WNO was going to leave the doors but make sure they were ADA hardware, paint them and clean them up, but in order to replace the existing doors with commercial grade solid core was gonna be an additional $2,600. Okay, any discussion on that? Well, if we're getting the two new doors out of it, and uh, the ADA compliance, let's get our bang for our buck there. Uh, I'll make a motion to award this to FTM contracting in the amount of $27,500. Second. Motion second on the floor. Roll call vote. Mayor Bilbrey. Yes. Vice Mayor Dyer. Yes. Honorable Norris. Yes. Honorable Hurt. Yes. Okay, next item, consider approval John Poole, CPA, for the fiscal year 16-17 annual audit in the amount of $6,900. Um, and that's the only one that we had put in a bid, Keith? That's correct. Uh, come bid opening, that was the only bid we had received. We did put the bid packet out, advertised it online and in the paper. Okay. Um, what, is it the same audit we've been getting all, this, all these years? I mean, I mean John Poole is years? the same auditor that we've used in the past, yes. We had a, uh, had a petition that circulated with a lot of folks that signed that, uh, and I've got a copy of that somewhere laying here, um, that says that they wanted a comprehensive audit. Is that this audit? Is that what he put a bid in for? Or did yes, he just it's the state-required financial compliance audit. Uh, meets all the state requirements. He does have to submit it to the state and follow through and ensure that they get all the submittals and everything they need. I was told that uh, 
the uh, comptroller's office has a list of people that's recognized by the comptroller's office. Uh, is there no way we could submit something to get more of the folks in here to bid on this, to get a better price? I mean, with one person bidding, I mean, you can pretty much bid what you want to that way. We can try to rebid it. It is a sealed bid, so he had no idea what any else would be bidding, uh, as well as any others. It's the same as any bid we do. These were all sealed, and they weren't opened until the day of the bid opening. So, What was his previous year's that uh, we paid? Same price. He hadn't S changed it. Same price? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, we want to rebid it. You guys want to try to get more folks in to do that? Sure. Okay. Does this have to be in by a certain time? We do have to submit to the state, I think, by June 30th of who's going to be doing that and fill out a letter and sign it. Yes. But we can have that ready. How long does it take him to do it? The letter? I just no, no. Not find him. The actual he audit. won't start the audit until probably August, uh, okay. but we have to notify the state who we've accepted as the auditor for this fiscal year. So, so really, at the time we've got right now, there's no real rush on it. I mean, we don't wait the last minute, but we've got time to try to get others in here if we want to bid someone else in. Correct? Yes, they would have to submit a sealed bid to be a, to be considered. I think we need to contact the comptroller's office and get an invitation out to these other folks so we can see what we're getting. Rather than going, and, and the IRS and the federal folks don't recommend that we use the same one over and over again. And how many years has this guy did it for us? Consecutive years. I have to look back. He was not doing it at one point. There was a couple of years that Wheeler and Duncan done it, so I'm not sure. Okay. If um, recollection serves me, I'm going to say at least the last five years he has done the, the audit. I, th I think so. Mm. If recollection uh, serves me. Uh, and I've got no issue. I mean, if we want to table this and take another 30 day period and take sealed bids, you know. You have to throw this bid out because it won't be able to remain since it's been over. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and <coughs> it may be that we have to increase what we're asking because if his numbers is already out, it's not fair for them to see his number for what we're already asking. Correct. For anyway. Correct. You know, you may want to up your ante. Yeah. So everybody's bidding on a new project. That takes away the idea of a sealed bid. So. Correct. So I make a motion that we table it. Uh, we get to contact the comptroller's office and get a list of folks that are recognized by those. And if you get their blessing, then you've got you've got the folks that's that's well known that can do the job. Um, and then bring it back and put it on the agenda for next month. I'll second that. Motion second on the floor. Roll call vote. Mayor Bilbrey. Yes. Vice Mayor Dyer. Yes. Honorable Norris. Yes. Honorable Hurd. Yes. Okay. Next item is consider approval of uh, someone to for the sewer jetter trailer in the amount of, and Keith, would you like to speak to that? This is a sewer jetter trailer that we put into the budget for last year in the water sewer. The one we currently have is... Uh, shutting down we've tried everything we can to rebuild the pumps and get the pressure back up and it doesn't have enough pressure to clear the lines uh, there have already been two instances this year where we've had to call another company to come clear a blockage in the sewer line uh, that we weren't able to clear with the machine we currently have uh, the bids that were submitted were tsc um, at forty one thousand five hundred dollars uh, this is a demo unit it's a 2014 unit with 14 hours uh, which didn't really meet the specs. We asked for um, for new trailer bids on this. Sansom Company, Lisa Epperson submitted fifty one thousand one hundred and seventeen dollars. Uh, again, was under specs. The engine was too small. <coughs> Rodders and Jet Supply submitted a bid of forty eight thousand one hundred and four dollars. But there were some extras that they recommended that um, we didn't include in our bid packet. That. Uh, they felt like would be necessary to run the machine properly, which brought its bid to $51,267. And then Powerline Chemical brought in a bid of $54,761.35. Victor, you want to speak to any of that? What, what? Okay. Um. How old is the unit that you have now? Well, you know, you, your cheapest bid is a demo unit, 2014 model, which means it's been used uh, and may not be anything wrong with it. For another, uh, about another 10000 you can have a new one with the extras, correct? 
Yes, it meets um, the 60 horse spec requirement to get the PSI we need. Okay. Victor, what do you say about 600? Does have somebody come in and do it? How often do we have to have somebody come in and do it? That, okay. I'm now. Okay. I'm just thinking. You know, this is from a business standpoint, if twelve hundred dollars. Now you help me out here, because I could be, you know, oversighting things. Twelve hundred dollars a year times twenty. They last about twenty years. That's about. Oh. You, We've you, been able to use it multiple times and it actually worked enough to get through it, but we also need to be doing maintenance on the lines. We have to go in, flush them and clean them and try to prevent blockages, which we're not able to do efficiently right now because the machines broke down. Well, as far as I'm concerned, there's a lot of things that are on the need for replacement, uh, this being one of them. There's several items that are old, outdated. We're having to repair constantly. That, uh, this is just one of those things that does need to be replaced. Um, with that being said, I will move that we uh, approve rotters and jet supplies uh, in the amounts of uh, $48,104 uh, with the extras $51,267. Uh, I'll second. Uh, motion and second on the floor. Roll call vote. Mayor Bilbrey? Yes. Vice Mayor Dyer? Yes. Honorable Norris? Yes. Honorable Hurd? Yes. Okay. That brings us to the city administrator's report. Budget comparative for the month, 75%. General fund revenues are 65.76% at $2,397,854.45. General fund expense is at 47.93%, that's $1,833,037.41. Water sewer revenues are at 78%, $1,223,703.29. Water sewer expense is 70.44%, uh, $1,112,136.62. $1 Total account balance is $8,000,000. $632,474.24. Uh, the Burton Branch project is moving forward. There was entrance signs that I sent a picture of you to, to you of a brick and mortar entrance sign that uh, Fast Signs gave me a, a proposal of what estimated cost would be. I emailed that and I meant to bring a picture and I must have left it on my desk. The price of that was $8,250. Uh, so that's what we're looking at if you go with a brick and mortar sign those are five foot six inches high 11 foot wide and 16 inches deep um, they are kind of consistent with what we have in front of the building um, so that gives you an idea of what we're looking at for an entrance sign I have talked to TDOT uh, and they are in agreement that they would work with us on the placement of that sign at the beginning of City of All Good as a beautification for the highway uh, that they would uh, kind of work with us on that is that set in stone? Because I've got a, a couple of things that have been traveling and looking at some signs. <coughs> Stop it's set in stone, just a starting point for okay. us. Okay, I'll to tell you what. We'll take we'll take a look at that as well. And I've got some signs that I want to, to, to be looked at as well and share it with the rest of the council. Uh, we want our city to be recognized. We want sure. it to look professional. And uh, I'm not saying that these signs that you've got known, I haven't seen them, but uh, I think everybody should have an input on it. Uh, even the citizens, you know. Uh, Absolutely. What, what I mean, they think. we were looking for maybe even a slogan to go on that sign. So, Perfect. you know, I'm still open to the to the idea that I brought up three or four months ago about uh, you know putting that out on our website or having the yeah. citizens come by and submit and let us choose from it. You know, and uh, okay. go from there. And I, the cost is kind of in line with what I was thinking, anywhere from seventy-five to hundred to ten thousand dollars on something like that. So, that's pretty close. And that's coming out of the next year's budget that we're, we'll be looking at, correct, Keith? Or is we that can put it in next year's. It was in this year's, but we can, you know, we can we review it and okay. do it again. So Okay. All I right. did put it in for next year's, too, just in case, uh, which I gave you tonight, a budget proposal, and I'll kind yes. of mention it a few okay. things. All right. The other thing, uh, we've been asked about the microphones here at the council bench. Um, the eight gooseneck mics with install 
that will fit the current system. It will still use this wireless base, but the mic and a button will plug into it and sit here. The mic will sit in front of your face where you'll get a better broadcast. To come and get those mics, install them, and attach them to our current system is $1,782. It's well worth that for folks out there that can't hear. Is that, is that good? It's tonight a little better. It's tonight a little better. <laughs> huh? Is somebody saying, huh? I got it right here. Yep. All right. We're, we're, we're working on it, Bill. Try to get took care of, okay? All so right. We can, uh, we can order that system with your all's approval. Uh, if you just want to send me an email, we'll try to get that done. Just send an email to you. Yeah, I think approving. that's under the bid limit, so okay. I should be okay there. That'll be fine. good with that. Okay. All righty. Okay. Next. Um, there was a nomination information for the council vacancy that I put in your packet. Uh, it was also emailed to you to see if you wanted me to run that in the paper or advertise it online or how you wanted to proceed with that. So if you'll look that over and just let me know what you wish me to do with that. I'll send, it, I'll send the email back to you as well. Everybody good with that? Yep. Okay. Um, also in your packet is the amount uh, from last year of budget requests and then this year's requested amount. Uh, the animal shelter has requested an $8,100 again this year, and they did ask that you all reconsider giving that $8,100 this year. The, the amount you all cut it back to was $5,000, um, that that would help them in the process of bidding out for a new incinerator for the animals. Uh, they just asked that you all reconsider that amount that you took down. Uh, we just sent the check to um, Meals on Wheels. This week, we <coughs> talked to her and got that squared away, so that money has been sent and dedicated to that program, so that's taken care of as well. I'll speak on that just a second. In case the folks don't remember, the reason that we took that away from them, we gave it back to UCHRA that we're feeding the elderly here. So we felt like that feeding the elderly was more important than giving to the animal shelter. Not that the animal shelter doesn't have its place and doesn't have its position. That was the reason that we switched the money going from one versus the other. Okay. Okay. The Main Street paving project that we had talked about uh, gave you tonight um, two separate estimated project costs. One is just to grind and overlay. Uh, of course, that will add new striping. It will put in the loops at the lights again and repair any damages with those. It will also add an upgraded pavement at the Walmart entrances uh, where we are having issues with trucks rutting the pavement and it's starting to buckle. So that would grind down and add a heavier duty pavement in those locations. Uh, that estimated project cost is $303,000. I'd also been asked to take the project and look at the possibility of adding a turn lane um, in addition all the way down to Riley's path to try to alleviate some of the traffic issues. Uh, we pulled that. Um, that number's a little harder to estimate because you are going to have to purchase a little bit of right-of-way um, as you come down through there um, on Main Street. And that project estimate uh, is roughly $752,000. Uh, so to put that turn lane in uh, would more than double the project cost. Uh, and at this point, um, I know we couldn't get the turn lane project done before end of year, and I'm almost positive we can't do the overlay before June 30th. Uh, so it's my best estimate that we're going to have to to wrap this over into July and August to really be able to complete it. Um, in addition to doing Main Street, since we're going down through there, I think we do need to go ahead and look at Elm Street and tie into Signature Healthcare and try to fix some issues we're having down through there as well. Do we want to put sidewalk on both sides going down Main Street if we just choose the 300,000 300, overlay? You could, but at this point, I think it would be better to address some other areas where we're having side, no sidewalks rather than an area where we've got at least one. Um, I do think we need to go from out here at Trinity on around by Dollar Tree and up through there next to A1 Storage and get a sidewalk where people don't have to cross the street at First National Bank. Uh, I think we need to look at that. Of course, we've got it bid to go around the ballpark for Fourth Avenue, uh, and, and we've got quite a few areas that we need to, to work on on that. Yes. Well, Dr. Hurdy brought up about doing a total city sidewalk plan. Wasn't that what you were talking yeah, about doing? At least, with uh, well, I'd love to do a whole city sidewalk plan, but do the cost. I mean, we're, you know, we could take some money and do a quarter of it. I mean, you know, yeah. I'm talking about taking some money of our savings. Yeah. I'm uh, talking about taking a quarter of a million, but. We're in the process of pulling that. To do the whole project. 
probably a, a total sidewalk project for the whole city of Allgood would be in excess of $2 million. Um, but we're working on a, we've got a master sidewalk plan that's already created that, that lists condition and location of sidewalks. Uh, and we're in the process of running estimates to see what it would cost us to bring all of those sidewalks up to compliance and add them in. So we'll have you a number hopefully in the next few weeks. Okay. Well, I was, I was the one that had actually asked Keith to see what the extension of that turn lane from Sonic right. down to Riley's Path, or excuse me, to Elm Street would actually cost. And thank you for doing that, Keith. You're right. But uh, I think we're better served not to pursue that at this time and pursue the issues that we do have on Elm Street, especially from uh, about midpoint on over to Signature is probably the worst spots for narrowness and depth of ditches and things like that. Plus, we've got a lot of <clears throat> we've got a lot of emergency traffic in and out of there too. So, uh, and, and please, by no means, we're not forgetting the people that live on Elm Street. You know that deserve a, a widened street and, and a whole lot smoother than what it is too. So. Okay. Yep. Fire hall is near completion on the engineering phase. We should have a plan ready to move forward here soon. Um, there were some sample rates that I put in there. We had talked about water and sewer tap fees, and you all had <coughs> asked me what those would look like if we cut them back. So I put it together a new price sheet, put that in tonight's packet for you all to look over and let me know your positions on those. Uh, we reduced them quite a bit and just increased a small amount. Uh, one of the things that's also in that packet is sanitation for commercial services. Um, last year, our sanitation truck uh, for commercial trash, excluding tires and operating supplies, uh, was in a profit line of $1,400. And that's not including buying dumpsters. Um, this year, at current state, um, without the diesel analysis, we have not completed diesel analysis for January, February, or March yet. We are $4,500 in the red, and that is not including dumpsters, tires, or operating supplies. Um, so we're going to have to address this issue. Uh, one of the ways that I propose that we address it is uh, instead of a $12 per pickup for dumpsters, as we look at doing a $15 per pickup, which is just a $3 per pickup increase. And we also look at increasing dumpster rental from $40 to $50 a month. The other thing that we do is when we order dumpsters, we don't charge any kind of fee. We just sell it to the customer for what we have in it. Uh, I think we need to add a 10% to that cost to cover administration and delivery fee because um, we're doing paperwork and then taking it to and from the location and, and doing things like that. And then uh, lid replacements we currently do for $25 a piece, and I would recommend we look at $35 a piece for lid replacements. Uh, assuming all of those without lid replacements um, for our pickups and rentals last year would increase our profit intake by $26,000. And again, that's still excluding tires and operating supplies. And if you all haven't bought tires for a commercial garbage truck, it's quite expensive. Um, the other thing is, is this year at the current state, it would have increased our intake by $18,000, which really would only be about a $14,000 increase right now since we're running in the red at the current state. That does not also does not include the purchase of a new truck. Um, we've had the current truck for 10 years, almost this October. Uh, new truck's about $330,000. So to pay for that truck, we should have been putting back an additional $33,000 a year to cover that cost and not have the taxpayers pay for that. That's a service we run for businesses. Uh, that really should support itself and not come out of taxpayer funds. That should free up some money for us to do more sidewalks and things of that nature. Uh, so that's my proposal for sanitation is in there for you all to look at. The budget proposal is put together, um, and I've put it in there for you to look <coughs> at and us to review. We, um, the only overage is the fire hall of $500,000. Other than that, the budget was balanced. We did not purchase police cars this year. We left that off because I don't feel that is uh, an appropriate purchase for us at this time. On the administration side, we did put back in an entrance sign, and we also put in uh, or the possibility of court software because we're looking at the new dispatch system that will be partnered with 911 in the county, and we have to go to e-ticket. Um, Captain Swallows, do you know when the e-ticket 
requirement goes into effect. It's included in the new software and states mandating we go to e-ticket, so we'll have to meet that mandate. Um, so we put $30,000 in PD admin for that dispatch software equipment, and if we don't use it, possibly to use to upgrade the current camera systems for in-car and patrol officers. Uh, either way, uh, we'll, we'll make that work for what we need to do. Uh, for the fire department, of course, the fire hall is in there, and that's it. That's a $500,000 project. Uh, public Works, we put in sidewalks, $66,675 to do more sidewalks. And a snow plow is an estimated $130,000. Uh, if we don't do the snow plow, at bare minimum, we're going to have to put at least a new bed on the truck to try to get by for another year or two, and that's going to really be pushing it. Um, but if you all choose to make that cut, we can try to do that. Uh, the sanitation commercial truck is in there for $330,000. Uh, one thing to note on the truck, that I've looked at, it will do commercial and residential and would allow us to sell the current commercial truck for some money and the old backup residential could go and we would no longer need any manpower even if the sidearm truck was down, it could always be run and operated by one individual, which is Mr. Hogan and he's here. Um, and he's looked at the new truck and we think uh, this would probably suit us better for the future too because that means one truck can do both services so we don't have to keep looking at two trucks every time we go down the road. Uh, the parks, we put in a community center kitchen, uh, some remodel work at $30,000 and the street, state street aid, we put the $330,000 in for, to do the main street project because I'm afraid we're not going to be able to complete it this year uh, and all of that's in your packet to look over. Going back to one thing real quick, the uh the uh, rates that you lowered in the water department for the tap fees and things. Yes. How is that going to affect? I mean, um, is that, of course, water and sewer has to stand on its own. We all know that that's state law, but uh, how is that going to affect it going forward? It's not going to be a tremendous help, but it will help some. Um, we are currently working on some price sheets to show you what the actual cost of those items are to install and put in. And it's, it's, it's uh, not as much uh, increase to where it affects anybody, but it will help us a little bit down the road. Okay. Because I was looking at revenue versus expense in your report tonight. Right. You know, uh, an 8% difference. Uh, I just, uh, and with well. the rising cost of everything, including the copper and, and all of the materials needed, I just didn't want it to uh, affect us and cause maybe an even larger rate increase next year or two years down the road. So, I think we're okay with this. One thing you have to consider with a utility fund is a um, depreciation cost of your equipment, uh, and that usually hits us pretty hard. Uh, you're talking just short of $300,000 in depreciation on your equipment uh, to cover replacements down the road, so that, that usually hits pretty hard. I think this will help us without um, doing detrimental effect to our customers. And our water loss is quite considerably lower too, is it not? It is. It's so. it's getting better, and we're working on it. So, that's all I've got. Department head, Captain. Okay, uh, that brings us to uh, the hearing of citizens and/or delegations. If you wish to speak, please approach the podium, directing your comments directly to the chair. Okay, if not, make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. All right.